independence referendum. Uh, but could it come rather sooner than that? Joining me today uh, are uh, Pamela Nash, who is the Chief Executive of Scotland in Union, and Blair Jenkins, who was the uh, Chief uh, Executive of the Yes Scotland campaign in the 2014 uh, referendum on uh, Scottish independence. Nice to see you both. Uh, if I could start with you, Pamela, I mean, we'll talk about the rights and wrongs in a moment, but where do you think we are in terms of the progress towards a second independence referendum? I was interested to hear the, the conversation you had before this, and it was mentioned that the polls are moving further towards independence. And yes, the, the polls do show a small majority for independence just now, but we're actually starting to see that support falling in recent weeks. I'm interested to see how um, what the opinion polls show when there's a change, I think, in the, the perception of how Nicola Sturgeon is doing in COVID. There is no doubt that the, the growth in support for independence has been directly impacted by the, the perception that Nicola Sturgeon has done a better job than Boris Johnson in that, but the, the facts just don't add up. I mean, and what do you think, uh, Blair? I mean, when is there going to be a vote on independence again? Morning, Adam. Well, um, I think the, the key thing to bear in mind here is that the, the independence issue is going to be the absolutely defining issue of the Scottish election in May. Uh, and I think the, the very important point is that if that election, as all the polls are showing, if that election produces a majority for the SNP and they have stood fair and square on uh, the issue of having a second independence referendum, then I think anyone of a democratic mind would say there will have to be uh, a second independence referendum. In terms of timing, um, I would imagine it's likely to be 2022. There was some discussion about whether it could be held towards the end of this year. I, I, I myself don't think it can move that quickly. And I think probably if I were guessing, I, I would have thought you know, May, June of 2022 is, um, is more likely. But the key issue, and, and Boris Johnson must never be allowed to get off this hook, is that he must respect the outcome of the election in May. Uh, people on both sides can put their arguments for, you know, for and against an independence referendum. But if the SNP, as the polls are showing, not only win a majority, not only win the election on that uh, manifesto commitment, but actually get more than 50% of the vote, then any democratic president in the UK, any democratic president anywhere, says they have to be allowed to have that mandate fulfilled and we will have an independence referendum. Uh, what do you say to that, Pamela, that, that if the will of the people turns out like that in the upcoming elections, uh, then really the right thing to do is to respect uh, what the voters have voted for. I think this, this election is far too important to just be treated as a referendum on a referendum. Like We're in the middle, right in the middle still of the COVID crisis, a crisis affecting healthcare, our economy in almost every aspect. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, but it, I appreciate that. But if it is framed in that way and the SNP do very well, do you think there then would be uh, an irresistible case to say, well, that's what people want, let them have it? Well, no, because that would then be saying that everyone in the country is voting in their party just on whether they think that there should be a referendum or not. And that is just simply not the case. The Scottish Government, the SNP have been in government now for more than 14 years. This is an election, it's not a referendum on a referendum, and people will be voting on a wide range of issues. Well, well, that's true, of course. That means uh, that... Sorry, Blair Jenkins. Well, I was going to say, I mean, Pamela's right, of course, it will be on other issues. But uh, the, the, the absolute tradition in British democracy is that if you put something in your manifesto, and it's a commitment in your manifesto, and you win the election, you implement the manifesto. And let's remember uh, that the, the Conservatives won the general election in 2015 in, in the peculiarities of the Westminster system with a 37% share of the vote and regarded that as an unchallenged mandate to hold the EU referendum a year later. So if the SNP get 50% plus in the Scottish election, on what planet is, not, is that not equally valid or more valid uh, as a, an absolutely unchallengeable mandate for an independence referendum? Now, now I think, I mean, I, I would accept that many of your listeners today, your viewers today rather, um, would prefer probably, um, personally, that Scotland chose not to leave the UK but equally, I think most people are fair-minded and most people respect democracy. And I, I believe that most people in the rest of the UK would say that if the SNP win the election fair and yep. square, have a majority, then they, they have to be allowed to implement their manifesto. I, I go back to what I said. Nonetheless, if the West... Sorry. Sorry, carry on. I just going to say, but it's, 
it's utterly irresponsible. Can you imagine any other government in the world at the moment get into election and not having the number one focus in their campaign being on the COVID response? The fact that we're really even talking about this at the moment is, is unbelievable. And asking the public to make a, a decision at a time of great stress and change, a, a decision that will last not for the, the term of a parliament, but forever, is just, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, uh, thank you both very much indeed. I'm afraid we've run out of time now, but I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing...